Okay, so today's video is for Mayurasana peacock pose, and it's another arm balance, and it's considered a fairly advanced arm balance. A lot of people have difficulty getting into this pose, but there are a couple modifications you can take to make this pose easier on yourself, both with the arms and the legs. A couple things about peacock pose to start off. So, um, some interesting things about peacocks in general. First off, um, so peacocks can um, eat snakes, which is really interesting. I actually, a family that lived by me growing up had peacocks on their farm, and I never knew why until I was an adult, but apparently peacocks eat snakes. They're snakers, apparently that's a word. Um, and they'll eat snakes on a farm, so that's why you'd have peacocks on a farm. And they can digest the poison of the snakes that they eat. And that's one of um, the things you can think about. There's relevance to me telling the story. That's one of the things you can think about when you're doing this pose. Because when you're doing this pose, your elbows are pressed firmly into your belly. And you're sort of working on pressing into that spot, that spot of digestion, that spot of fire in your belly. And so you want to think about really pressing firmly. So even if you don't end up lifting the legs or lifting the head in this pose, you can still think about really pressing into that digestive center of your body, just like, and think about the peacock um, digesting the poison. And it's actually, um, there are some folk tales that talk about the peacock getting its color and getting its beautiful appearance from taking the poison and digesting it and working with it and manifesting the poison into its beauty. Um, so that's kind of a nice metaphor for us taking our troubles and turning them into something beautiful. Anyway, just something to, something to think about while you're doing this pose. So, um, so this pose is often taught with the hands touching together, the palms touching together, the elbows together, pressed into the belly and the hands pointing directly backwards. So for some of us that's not going to be very accessible. So the first modification I would suggest for this pose is to turn the hands out and not back. So that's the first modification you can do to make this pose a little bit easier, is you can turn the hands out. That's also going to make it a little bit easier on your wrists. You're absolutely going to want to warm up the wrists, um, stabilize them with some warm up. So warm up the body with a lot of flowing, flowing um, before you attempt this pose. But also um, warm up the wrists with rich stretches too um, before you try to get into this pose because there's a lot of pressure going backwards um, on the wrists and putting pressure on the wrists that way. So that's one modification to turn the wrists out instead of backwards. The other thing is, although in the final asana people talk um, ideally about the arms being together, you don't have to get the arms that close together. They don't have to be touching. So you can start with having the arms separated, and you can combine those two things. So instead of having the arms together and hands pointed back, you can have the arms separate and the hands pointed out. So ideally, the hands are pointed back and together, and you're reaching forward. So that's what it would look like, but the modification would be to have the hands pointed out, slightly separated, And that's how that works. So, the other thing people have trouble with is when we talk about arm balances, and I'm going to say this over and over again probably in lots of videos, is our body is a lever, right? So we're this long lever, and if we just think about physics, we've got these long legs, and we've got this short little front body over our arms. With peacock pose especially, it can be really hard to find that balance point, and the easiest way to um, simplify this in our bodies is to make our legs shorter. So there are a couple ways to do that. One way is just to bring the feet into Baddha Konasana, butterfly or bound angle or cobbler's pose, whatever you want to call it, is to bring the feet together and to enter the pose that way. So you can start with the knees bent, big toes together, bring the hands to whatever hand position works best for you. So really take those elbows and think about bringing them into that area below the rib cage, sort of between the rib cage and the belly button, that's where you want to press the elbows into. That's really going to help you find stability in this pose. So really think of rounding the back, pressing that in and then leaning forward as you come into the pose. So find your hands in the right position. Right? And 
And then when you start to lean forward, you're going to have to pull your elbows slightly in front of your wrists. So you're not going to stay here. See how I lean slightly forward and then I reach with my head and then I can bring my feet together. Keep reaching with your head, creating space so you're not sinking into the floor. That's going to make it harder. Keep reaching with your head. And then my feet are less long. It's easier to find balance. So that's one way you can do your feet. The other modification with the feet, it's again, it's just keeping about keeping them short. And some people find this easier, is to bring your feet into lotus and to come into it from lotus. It's just about keeping the feet tight into the body, making yourself less of a lever. So again, you would do that the exact same way. Bring your feet into lotus, come into it from lotus. So the arms in whatever arm position works for you. Lean forward, get those elbows in front, look forward, lean forward, let the legs lift. Reach, reach, reach through the face, look forward. And then come down. All right, I hope this helps. Okay, let me know.